بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Alhamdulillah, it's a, a great uh, honor to be here uh, with all my brothers and sisters from the MEC, to be on the MIC for the MEC. Yes. Uh, may Allah Ta'ala bless this program, bless all of you and all the wonderful work you, you're doing. It was wonderful listening to everyone. Uh, so to, to approach this from a, a Quranic, prophetic paradigm, the issue of, of mental health, and how we might uh, benefit from from the Quran and from the Sunnah and from the prophetic paradigm. I think uh, we we could do well to reflect on uh, many specialists. I'm not a specialist in mental illness per se, <clears throat> but many specialists identify five basic uh, causes or factors that contribute contribute to mental illness. So there's trauma especially psychological trauma in childhood, the psychological factors, the biological factors, there are genetic or hereditary, hereditary factors, and there are, I uh, mentioned the environmental. Uh, so that's it, the psychological, environmental, biological, hereditary, and uh, uh, so those four we'll deal with, and then the psychological, the fifth, the psychological. So the the ones immediately relevant and amenable to being directly benefited from a Quranic or uh, prophetic paradigm, not the hereditary. Uh, that's that's requires extreme specialization, and that's the most difficult to deal with. And uh, not the uh, biological, even though there's some implication, but the psychological, uh, the trauma, trauma, psychological factors, and environmental. So what we like to do in our brief time is to look at certain uh, hadith, certain verses from the Quran and certain prophetic practices, as the title of the talk indicates, and then look at which vi environmental factors those teachings address. So we start with the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَنْ جَعْلَ الْحُمُومَ هَمَّنْ وَاحِدًا هَمَّا أَخِرَاتِهِ أو هَمَّ الْأَخِرَةً كَفَاهُ اللَّهُ فِي هَمِّ دُنْيَاهُ So whoever gathers all of their concerns into one concern, the concern of the Akhirah, Allah suffices him or her in their worldly concerns. And so sometimes a person, especially this is uh, common in people that have uh, what we used to refer to as nervous breakdowns. I'm sure there's specialists such as Sister Akil or, or Sister Mubaraka. And th those are the two speakers I heard. Oh, and, and I heard uh, Chaplain Umar Bajwa. And, uh, they've all studied psychology, so there might be a new psychological term for nervous breakdown. But a lot of times, those nervous breakdowns occurred when a person was overwhelmed. They were handling so much from so many different directions, their circuits just crashed. And so computers aren't the only thing that crash when they're overloaded, right? They, they say he, the, the, the program broke the internet. There were so many people trying to log on to the program from so many different uh, directions that the, the internet couldn't handle it. And, and so it's very important for us to try to focus on the akhirah. And, and, and so the, 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 the environmental factor here is uh, worries. So ham humum is sometimes translated as worries. So one who makes all of their worries. 
and all of their concerns the akhira so man ja'ala ja'ala al-humum plural all their worries hamma uh, al-akhira the concern of the hereafter kafahu Allah fi hammi dunyahu or hamma dunyahu and so this is the first thing to try to all of us because all of us are amenable to some sort of mental illness all of us under certain circumstances could fall into depression all of us under certain circumstances can suffer from various mental maladies some more severe than others and so all of us it behooves all of us to try to focus on the akhirah and to keep this world in perspective it's only the dunya this week has been really a crazy week here in the united states but we have to always remember it's only the dunya so it's not it's not the uh it's not the akhira and it's temporary <clears throat> the second is uh vicar so the first focusing on allah the second is vicar and this is the big one uh vicar helps to calm the heart and the soul and so we can become so agitated that this leads to to a variety of mental conditions and it also we can become so agitated when we're dealing with so many things from so many different directions so allah ta'ala reminds us in the quran alladhina amanu wa tatma'innu qulubuhum bi dhikri la ala bi dhikri Allah tatma'innu qulub and and so uh, the environmental factor here being addressed is trauma because a, a lot of time trauma settles into our hearts and as we grow and mature even though we might not be consciously aware of it what settles into our hearts creates agitation and so uh, bro- brother akil i think mentioned some of the problems that that might occur as a result people start overeating they start becoming sexually irresponsible because of that agitation uh they they become very disruptive and so uh we're reminded that the dhikr of allah calms the heart ala bi dhikri llahi tatma'innu al-qulub verily the remembrance of allah brings stillness to the heart tranquility to the heart uh another ben- benefit of of dhikr uh uh is found in a hadith qudsi where allah ta'ala says ana inda dhanni 'abdi bi wa ana ma'ahu haythu dhakarani so i'm with my servant as he or she thinks i am and so if if we think that we're we're helpless and there's no one to help us then we will that's what we'll find because if we think not even allah can help me out of this and in the dhanni abdi bi wa ana ma'ahu haythu dhakarani so if we think that's how allah is that's what we'll find but if we think allah can give me relief if we think allah uh in addition to a particular therapeutic regimen or intervention that might not seem to be effective but we couple that with a good opinion of allah allah can cure me allah can make this medicine work allah can make this therapy successful <clears throat> that's what we'll find and so that's that's very very powerful how do we think allah is because that's what we'll find and if we believe that is 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 proven there will be efficacy and again we're primarily focusing on the environmental and and psychological factors and not the hereditary hereditary or the, the biological uh con- consistency in worship and and so uh one of the fruits of dhikr is it aids us in being consistent in our work worship because the worship is a a key to dhikr and a dhikr is an encouragement to worship so uh allahumma uh, salli rasulillah uh the saying of musa uh, as mentioned in the quran la uh, allah addressing musa excuse me in the quran la la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa aqimus salata li dhikri so uh 
there is no God but me, la Worship me, fa'budni, and undertake the prayer, this act of worship for my remembrance. And so the, the worship brings about dhikr and the dhikr is encouragement to worship. And being consistent in our worship helps to drive off the, the, the laxity and languidity that's usually a sign of depression, a consequence of depression, but it could be a consequence of other uh, mental illnesses. And again, this is, this is from the perspective of Quran, but it's not to negate anything that a, a therapist or a trained uh, clinician might recommend. <clears throat> uh, another benefit, it relieves uh, worries and concerns for the vicar, rather, is a means to re re reflect and remember Allah Ta'ala's blessings. So, Alam uh, Rasulillah, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Remember the blessings of Allah on you. And so what does that do? That addresses uh, the, the issue of, of worthlessness and the, the issue of, of being uh, alone, unassisted. But, uh, so if we remember Allah's blessing, we're worthy. Because well, I've been blessed. Why? Because I'm worthy of those blessings. Allah saw fit to bless me. I know my time is wrapping up, so I'll just have a couple more. Uh, so we'll leave dhikr. There are a few more things to be said, but in the interest of time, I want to just mention seeking strength through others. So a lot of times we think we're in this battle alone. It might be depression. It might be some other mental illness and no one understands. No, there's no one to help me. So we have to be a community. We have to seek help. We have to help each other, and that's common. A lot of people, they're willing to help, but we have to be amenable to receiving help and seeing that we possess qualities, even if we're struggling with something that can assist out, uh, others. So our Prophet mentioned, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and mu'min lil-mu'min kal bunyan yashuddu ba'dhu ba'dha. The believers are like the individual bricks in a wall. Each one strengthens and supports the next. And then finally, there are a few more others, but I, I know my time is up. I don't, Imam Salahuddin, get in my case. So Dr. Salahuddin, Dr. Imam, Brother Salahuddin. So I mentioned this uh, last thing, and that is Al Mu'min Al Qawi Khayrun wa Ahabu Al Allah Min Al Mu'min Min Al Mu'min Al Daif wa Fi Kulin Khayr. The strong believer is better and more beloved to the weak to Allah than the weak believer, and in each there is good. And so, what is the benefit of this particular? Uh, teaching. Number one, even if a person feels they're, they're weak because they're wrestling with an, a mental illness, they shouldn't feel that way because they're, all of us have weaknesses and all of us have strengths. But the hadith says, kullin khair, In the strong one and the weak one, there's good. In other words, you have virtue. You have, there's goodness and virtue in you that Allah Ta'ala loves. And if you're loved by Allah, you really don't need any other love, especially when you realize the power of Allah's love. And then the hadith goes on, ala ma yanfa'uka. And so uh, seek for that which benefits you. The, the lesson here is don't hesitate to seek help. Don't hesitate to, to go to uh, a, a spiritually refined individual who's known not to be a charlatan, don't seek, don't hesitate to go to a clinician. Don't he hesitate to seek the help of a therapist. Don't, don't he hesitate to seek the help for a psychiatrist if that's going to strengthen you and to help you overcome what you might perceive to be a weakness. <laughs> Rely on Allah and seek the help of Allah. <laughs> and don't see yourself as being incapable or incompetent. And so that goes right to the heart of what many brothers and sisters who might be wrestling with a particular mental illness might feel they're incapable, they're incompetent, let us Don't see yourself like that. Seek help from your brothers and sisters and realize your help, your source of strength yourself in many ways 
for those brothers and sisters that you might seek help from. May Allah give us tawfiq and taysir. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.